What's up everyone, Bob's Valerius here and today marks the first time in well over a year that I have done a video on the series of Get to Know Me More Than Movies. Uh, today I'll be talking about addiction. Uh, I made a video on my top 10 favorite addiction movies last year and shared a little bit about my story and I'll be kind of going into some more detail about that today. So stay tuned and uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. Alrighty, so like I said, it's been over a year since I posted one of these videos. I haven't talked about the Get to Know Me More Than Movies series, um, but I really enjoyed doing those a while back. Uh, I do have some more plans coming up for another uh, topic that I'm going to be talking about. Um, a very hot topic that seems to be a word that gets floated around and people really seem to hate, which will be community. You'll be hearing me talk about that in about a month or so. I have some plans and I wanted to talk about that, get some stuff off my chest and really open up and just be completely open and honest about it. So that's my plan. But today we're going to be talking about addiction. I have three movies pulled aside as I always do with my previous videos on this series. I talk about three different movies, kind of what they mean to me. I tie them into my story and I just talk about different things. And um, today, actually November 1st, today is 11 years since I've had a sip or a drink of alcohol at all. Uh, so I quit back in 2013. Um, last year I made a video, it was 10 years. This year it's 11 years. Um, I like talking about my story personally because I, I you never know if it could help somebody. Uh, somebody might be going through something similar that you did. Um, and I think it helps me in general talking about it. And I'm always an open book. I always want to be vulnerable and honest. Uh, everybody does things differently on their channel and YouTube. Some people share their life stories. Some people are very reserved. Some people you would never know what's going on in their life. For me, I like to be pretty transparent and honest. So, I'm going to talk about three different movies. Now, I could have pulled a handful of movies. As most people know, addiction movies are probably my favorite genre out there. Um, I love a drama, but I love something that I can relate to, um, something that really hits me hard. And, uh, you know, not everyone's going to agree on the same movies, right? I've been recommended addiction movies that didn't work for me. And I'm sure I've recommended addiction movies that don't work for others. Um, the biggest thing to remember is don't judge someone for one. Uh, you never know what somebody's going through. You never know why a movie is somebody's favorite movie. You never know why a movie means as much as it does to them. Um, they like movies for many different reasons. They hate movies for many different reasons, but never judge somebody for what they love or don't love or hate or vice versa. It's their opinion. It's their experience with the movie. Allow them to feel that, um, without being so judgmental. And uh, I think it makes, at times, the enjoyment of watching movies and letterbox and ranking movies sometimes difficult because some people get very judgmental. They are like, why did you rate it that high? Or they just don't agree with you and they let you know it. And that's okay. But I think some people could be disrespectful about the way they go about it. Um, it's important to never judge somebody's movie taste. Um, always remember that. But anyway, so I'm going to talk about three movies. I'm going to start with the first one which is going to be an A24 title. Based on that, you might already know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to talk about Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler, which I just recently talked about on my channel not too long ago. This was a recommendation to Jeff. Uh, if you know who he is, go check out his channel. Awesome guy. He really liked this one a bit. Uh, it is very stressful. Uh, I'm sure most people have seen this movie by now. Um, I remember seeing it in theaters. I think it was my first introduction to the Safdie brothers. I believe that's how you pronounce their names. Um... It's a very stressful movie, like I said, very fast pace, hard to catch your breath kind of thing. And it's quite long, about two hours, 20 minutes long. Um, some great camera work, as they do a really good job with. And then they always have a very interesting score that, for me, never fits with the movie. But that's not, you know, important um, for this movie, uh, at least for what I'm talking about, I should say. Some people love the score, and that's great. Um, so, for Uncut Gems, now, this is a movie about a gambler, right? He's he's a gambling, he's an addict. Uh, he loves to gamble, and he's out of control, and he's 
just keeps doing the wrong thing and he's trying to fix it and he does you know like one step forward two steps back kind of thing but I actually could relate a lot to Uncut Gems because from the age of about 16 17 I talk a lot about like alcohol and other things when it comes to addiction as you know I'm always moving my hands that's my thing but I don't talk a whole lot about gambling I think it's something that too not either not too many people struggle with or acknowledge they struggle with it or just don't talk about it so I don't know too many people if any that struggle with gambling I know some people that gamble but I guess they just don't struggle with it the way I did when I was younger I'll share a little bit about it so when I was 16 this is why this movie relate like I can relate to it very very heavily when I was about 16, I got caught up in gambling. Um, I never got caught up in slots or casinos or anything like that. I started gambling on sports from a pretty young age, 16, 17, 18, something like that. I'm now 33, so this is 15, 16, 17 years later. And uh, there were times I took off gambling, but I got bad at times. I, um, I was using, because this was before gambling was legal. In a lot of states, it's legal now. And so before that, I was gambling with like these websites, you know, overseas and things like that. And it was a pain in the butt. I remember there was a time I won some money and then went to go cash out and you had to go type in your driver's license and all this other stuff and documents and proof of address. And it took days or weeks, actually. And by that time, you gamble with the money you had. And I remember losing it all. So I didn't even get to cash out that one time. So like, there's so many stories about that, but... I I recently told Mizzy about this. Um, he he just it's almost it's it's funny to hear, but like this is when you know you have a real problem. I don't know. This was five five six no longer than that. Yeah, I, I don't know. It had to be about anywhere from the last five to ten years ago. I was gambling with a bookie, and uh, I in case you don't know what a bookie is, it's you know I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a bookie is, but you gamble with them and you owe them money or they owe you money if you win or lose, essentially. And bookies can be dangerous, but just pay them. You know, you need to pay them. Well, anyways, I was gambling with money I really didn't have. It was a $500 limit. And I remember getting to like, so if you're, if you're negative 500 at the end of a week, you owe, right? You'll have to pay out. And so I got really close. I remember getting to a point where I was gambling on, like Chinese basketball at five in the morning. And that's like a, a big sign of, you know, you have a problem. Um, and once again, this was like five, 10 years ago, but I was just gambling on things, tennis that I didn't know anything about just to try and win money. Um, and I think a sure sign of somebody that shouldn't be gambling and is struggling with the gambling back then, I didn't have the money. I was gambling to pay my bills. I wasn't gambling for entertainment. Some people gamble for entertainment. They go to casinos for different reasons. I was gambling to pay my bills and I was losing. And then I was having to borrow money for my mom or something like that to pay a bookie that I didn't have money for, which is crazy. Um, once again, never really opened up about this, but it's in the past. So I'm okay with talking about it now. Um, and I always pride myself on being like open and pretty vulnerable. So yeah, it sucked. I got into some really bad places. I put myself into some credit card debt because of gambling. I will never blame gambling for me being in credit card debt or movies or anything like that. You make the choice to put yourself in credit card debt. Sure, like things contribute to that and maybe we're a deciding factor or something like that, but we choose to swipe that credit card. You know, gambling did not force me to do that. Physical media did not force me to do that. I got myself into that because I chose to gamble with a credit card and then you have to pay fees on top of that. But I wanted to, and I needed to, and I thought I needed to at least. And so I got myself into trouble, but I ended up, like I went through Celebrate Recovery with gambling. And then I remember going there and not one person struggled with that. It was always alcohol or drugs or anything else. And it was just like, okay, I'm the only one here for gambling. And it was kind of like, what do I do? You know, I didn't, there was nobody that could relate. So I started going for other things, started talking about other things. And my goodness, I'm going to talk about it in a little bit, but I've struggled with so many things in my life. I've been, I've had an addictive personality, ran in my family with my dad. And so I know, and you know, sometimes you go from having one addiction to another. That was kind of always my struggle. Sometimes it was a healthy one. Like I got into running and that always helped when I was running because it kind of took my mind off of everything else, kept me, kept me focused and grounded. 
And, uh, but yeah, gambling was always a tough one. And so in this movie, like, I don't want to spoil it, but it, it feels pretty realistic, uh, to me, at least I've, I've been there with some of the things, some of the choices he makes where you're just like, I gotta, I gotta do this. And it, anybody who struggled with any addiction, but especially gambling, we all know we've come up with a thousand different excuses of this is my last bet, or I just need to win my money back. Or once I win this much money, I'm done. I swear, like I, a gambler has the world's greatest excuses. And all at the end of the day, all it is, is an excuse. But I know that. And so now, like, you know, the term you can't bullshit a bullshitter. So when I got like friends who struggle with addiction or something, they're trying to tell me like, hey, the, you know, the last time or I just, this is my like last hurrah, I'm just like, yeah, I've, we've, I've been there. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. Like I know I've used those excuses. This is it. This is it for me. I'm done after this. I just want more drink or, you know, I just, I need to finish this pill bottle or, uh, I just need to use the rest of this, this Coke or something like that, whatever it is. Right. Or it could be a number of things. This is it. This is it. I'm, I'm done after this. I'm done. It is start over the first of the month or whatever Monday, or I just need to use the rest. Like I, I've been there with every excuse in the book. So when my friends talk about it, I'm just like, yeah, I've been there. I, I know what you're talking about and it never works really usually. So yeah, obviously something happens to him at the end of the movie. I'm not going to get into spoilers. I don't want to do that, but it's just one of those movies where you're like watching it as somebody who's been there with gambling. I'm like, damn, like this, this is stressful. I get this. I feel this because I've been there where I'm just like, holy crap, like, this is relatable and you just the stupid decisions you make where you're like, you don't have money, you lose money with one guy, so you start gambling with another, you know, and he does that in the movies, like, he's just gambling with multiple people because you're trying to pay off this other bookie, so you start with a new bookie or something, it's just like, I've been there, I've, I've made mistakes with gambling, luckily, usually football season is a struggle for me, this year I haven't bet, um, I haven't in a while. I haven't placed any gambling on baseball, football, or basketball. Basketball season started up. But I uh, even last year during the playoffs, which is NBA playoffs, which is something I would usually gamble during, I didn't. And it was a lot of fun. I, I'm a Mavericks fan. They went to the NBA Finals, lost. But I didn't gamble at all. And I remember Mizzy, because Mizzy's a basketball fan, and he was like, um, do you want to place like a small wager, a steel book, or a movie, or something like that? And... Uh, at first, I was like, yeah, kind of, but two things. I didn't really like the Mavericks' chances against the Celtics, but also I remember telling him, I was like, you know what, dude? I just don't want to. I was like, even though it's not gambling on, you know, with a bookie or Bet Rivers Casino or something like that, I was like, I don't want to bet. I was like, because I, I could see myself going. I was like, I did good this whole postseason. I just want to enjoy the NBA Finals and not gamble. And he's like, okay, cool, you know, and he understood and uh, I think he would have liked to bet because the Celtics won. He would have gotten a free steel book. But it was one of those things where, like, I think, you know, even small things like that, would you like a $5 strip card, could set you back. So you have to be careful. And I'm always trying to be mindful of that Super Bowl, things like that. Like, hey, stay away from that. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. And so I, it's gotten me into trouble, but I don't. I choose not to gamble now. And um, it's it's been a, a great decision <laughs> because... Sure, you can win, don't get me wrong, but I lost more than I won. And I, when I say I lost from 18 years old, I don't know, I've lost, jeez. In 15 years, I won some, but I lost more than I, I won. And I'm talking I lost at least, I would say, in 15 years, probably at least anywhere from ten to $20,000, I would say, cumulative over accumulating over the course of 15 years or so, even with the winnings, I would say anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000. And so I choose not to anymore. And I always have to be mindful that it's not always the easiest thing, but it's been pretty easy as long as I stay away from it. I think I actually called my bank and I told them, I said, you got to block Bet Rivers Casino so I can't even gamble. So if I wanted to, I wouldn't even be able to, which is a really smart idea. And I, I ended up getting a new debit card. So I have to actually do the same thing with this new card. But Things like that, you have to make those sacrifices or decisions like, you know, even having friends in your life who can hold you accountable and know like, hey, how you doing? I know this is a struggle. This is a time of year that could be a struggle. You got to have friends in your life who are going to help you out, build you up, hold you accountable, keep you grounded, check in with you, things like that. And tough love. Tough love's a big one, right? Not somebody that's going to enable you, but when you talk about, hey, I slipped 
they're going to have love and compassion, but also be honest and have tough love. And I think that's super important. And that's something I learned going through recovery with other guys, with other addictions and understanding like, hey, we're there to help each other out. We're going to listen, but we're, you also need to have tough love. And I have some people in my life like that. And I have some people in my life that are very, I don't want to say pushovers, but won't they'll understand you like slipped or something and they just, they don't have that tough love. So you need those friends in your life who have that tough love and the ones who are maybe going to be more supportive and understanding, I guess. But for me, I'm somebody who likes tough love. So I appreciate the ones in my life who are like, they crack down that, they, they crack the whip, right? They know like, Hey, you got to get your shit together. Like, that's not okay. Like, Hey, I love you, bro. But like, what are we doing here? You know? And you need those friends. The next movie I'm going to talk about is going to be A Good Person, which is going to be Morgan Freeman here and Florence Pugh. Now, obviously, Ken's not a Florence Pugh fan. Anybody who knows Ken, mid-level media, hates Florence Pugh, really, her acting, whatever it is. He doesn't like her voice, her face. I don't know what it is, but I really like Florence Pugh. I think she can act. I think she's one of the best young actresses. I'm assuming she's in her late 20s, maybe 30s now. Excuse me, but I think she's one of the best out there. Uh, Zach Braff directed this movie. It is a five-star movie for me. This movie is incredible. It is emotional. It tugs on the heartstrings. Um, Florence Pugh and Morgan Freeman are incredible, in my personal opinion. Uh, it, it's got a great story. Um, the pacing is really well. Uh, everything about this movie is great. But it's it's got several things addictions in there there's some alcohol morgan freeman struggles with florence Pugh is more so addicted to painkillers uh the story of the movie is basically that she had a fiance and her sister-in-law or sister-in-law to be they were in the i'm sorry yeah uh basically she had her like i think it was yeah her sister-in-law and her sister-in-law's husband um, that she was driving with one day in the beginning of the movie. That's the story. And there's a car accident. And she did have her eyes down looking at her phone at maps or something like that in the movie. And there's a car accident. And for the first year, she's struggling. She's in pain, um, depressed, things like that. And she's popping a lot of painkillers. And she, she starts to run out and she's trying to get more painkillers. She starts reaching out to people from that she's hasn't talked to in forever and she's just like that are they could write a uh, prescription and she's just like can you write a prescription and not even talking to these people for so long and um i have been there so uh i had a lot of pain a while back uh, from a number of different things and i was struggling and i remember getting a prescription for vicodin and i had never really taken vicodin and I started to, and then I was struggling with some depression at the time. And I started to like abuse them. And I started to take two and sometimes more at a time. And then I had a free refill a prescription to get a free refill or whatever. And I did. And I, the pain was gone, the physical pain, but I kept taking it because I liked the feeling of being numb and uh, just kind of escaping for a moment. And I think when it comes to depression, and that this isn't, you know, the topic I want to talk about today. But I've realized over time, like depression is sometimes for me, everybody describes depression in a different way. If you've seen the movie Cha-Cha Real Smooth, the guy asks Dakota Johnson's character, what does depression feel like? And she explains what it feels like for her. Now, some people in the comment section said, like, that's nothing like depression. That's not what depression feels like. But who are you to discredit somebody and say that's not what depression feels like? Depression feels like something for different for everybody, right? And so for me, it was, I like if I'm feeling depressed, I didn't want to wake up. I didn't want to, I hated myself, right? If I hated myself, I didn't want to be awake because when I was asleep, I didn't have to worry about myself. I didn't have to hate myself because I was sleeping. And so I took pills and I overslept and I slept in because I didn't want to face my situation. I hated myself. I was depressed. And so I would take those. And uh, I got addicted to Vicodin. Not for a long time, but I did for a bit. And uh, I remember going in and having some teeth work done in my, I'm close with my dentist. And uh, he was like, I'm going to give you some Vicodin. I'm going to write your prescription for Vicodin for the pain. Um, because it's going to hurt for a couple weeks or whatever. And I was like, I told him straight up, I said, Bill, I said, I can't 
I can't have you write me a prescription for Vicodin. And I said, I just can't do it. I said, I, the last time I did, I said, um, last time I took Vicodin, I said I abused it. And so I was like, I can't, I can't have a prescription written for Vicodin. So I pop ibuprofen if I have pain, I just kind of deal with pain if I, if it's really bad, but I won't do that again. Cause I don't even want to tempt myself. Like it was a short span, wasn't a long time, but I don't want to go through that. And I see it in the movie, a good person. And even the alcohol part of it with Morgan Freeman and they're like, there's a scene in the movie that's very powerful. And, um, I could see the relationships. If, you, if you've seen a good person, you'll understand the relationships in the movie that it takes a toll on. And for me, I've been there and addiction has hurt my relationship with a lot of people in my life. Um, a lot of times my mom will still ask me to this day, are you gambling? And I'm just like, no, but here's the thing. And I understand this, okay? I, I, I get this. I broke that trust with my mom a long time ago when, and I admitted to her recently, actually, it was five, 10 years later, but I told her I lied to her to get money to pay a bookie. And so a lot of times she thinks sometimes I'm still gambling and that trust is gone. That trust is broken. And so when you lie to somebody, even if you tell the truth later on, right, um, it's happened to me in my life. And when you, when you break that trust with somebody, trust is a hard thing to like build okay but it's really easy in the snap of a finger to destroy trust and when it's gone sometimes it's gone for good it's really hard to get that trust back and even no matter how much you might love someone or trust trusted someone or are friends with someone it could be a husband a wife a spouse whatever a brother a sister a friend parent if you break that trust it's so hard for that person they might still love you but that it's hard for them to ever trust you again, right? So when something comes out of your mouth, like they might not believe you. And so there's still times to this day and I'm just like, no, I'm not gambling, but that trust is gone, right? So like, does she even believe me? Even if I tell her that? I get it though. I understand that because I broke that trust. And so it's hard. It sucks because once you do, it's hard to get it back. And that's, that's family too. So that sucks. But trust is... Is something that like it takes time to build and it's easy to destroy and i've i've hurt relationships because of addiction i've taken advantage of people in the past when it was offered help was offered or something like that um whatever it was lied or something all because of addiction and luckily like i said for me having had a drink in 11 years stopped gambling i don't know that's i think i gambled once month almost a year ago about a year ago um but yeah about once in the last two years and that was almost a year ago so it's been a while um i stopped i don't take vicodin or anything like that but i've gotten addicted to like some people could say you get addicted to the gym or running i've heard um physical media and the thing is like the way i perceive addiction it's going to be different for everyone right for me addiction i look at it like this if i asked you if I took your collection away from you, or if I told you you can't spend a dime or a dollar on movies, you can't buy a single movie for a month, would you be able to survive? If the answer is no, and you're in withdrawals and you're panicking and it's three weeks and you're just like, I need my fix, I need a movie. To me, that's an addict. That screams somebody who's addicted, right? If you can't live without something, that tells me, especially, especially something like, drugs, alcohol, like, and I know people say you can't get ad addicted to marijuana or weed. Um, I don't smoke weed. It's not my thing. I did it for a tiny bit of phase when I was like 20 for a few months and I hated it. It wasn't my thing. I know a lot of friends of mine smoke weed. Okay. That's fine. But if I asked you, could you live without something for a month? And your answer was absolutely not. Like I need it. I need this. And you couldn't do it. And it was a week that went by and you just were like, give me my weed, give me my alcohol, whatever it is. To me, that screams you have a problem. And so I know like physical media, what's behind me. Uh, in 2021, I, I barely bought any movies. I was running a lot of races, but I was addicting to running races. So I kind of swapped one addiction for another. I'm trying to figure out in my life as I've gotten older, 33 years old, how to live within my means 
enjoy physical media, but still enjoy running races and training and things like that. And I want to get back to that. Enjoy the gym, things like that. And spend money on movies, but also spend money doing races. And learn to love both, but in moderation. Not be addicted to one or the other and learn to live with both. And I still, at 33, I have yet to figure out how to do both. Because injuries have played a part of it. But for me, it was always like, I just, I'm not a very, I don't di dip my toes in the water. I'm like all in kind of person. So I dive in or I stay out of the water kind of thing. And that could be good, but it could be really bad at times. And I think it's affected me at times because then you're just like all in on something that might not be the best for you. And sometimes I get all in on buying movies and that could hurt your wallet. Like, yes, I'm able to pay my rent, but sometimes I'm putting movies in front of other things. And luckily I'm able to pay some of my bills, but like sometimes I know that I put movies in front of other things and I know this can be an addiction, but I guess I just continue to do it. But I want to learn how to like understand I don't need, I don't need this, right? It's a want, it's not a need. It's difficult at times because I feel like I need that, I need that, I need that, but you don't. And, um, it's, I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing and I'm trying to. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is going to be, the last movie is going to be The Way Back. Well, this was recommended, another, what did I just watch stream? I recommended this one to Nikki. So this one was Nikki's number one on her list. This was her favorite movie on my list that I gave her. Uh, she loved it. Um, we talked about it for about 45 or 50 minutes, probably, um, I love this movie. I think Ben Affleck gives an incredible performance. Honestly, I think that Ben Affleck could have or should have been nominated for an Oscar. Um, his acting in this was incredible. I love basketball. I love sports movies. I love Gavin O'Connor, who's the director of this movie. He's one of my favorite directors. Love Ben Affleck. Maybe not so much as a person. Seems to have his own issues in his life as well. But um, I try to stay away from that uh, and just enjoy the movies and stuff like that and not get into their personal lives. Ben Affleck, when he was filming this, he it's a movie about a man who's lost something in his life, uh, his son to be exact, and uh, him and his wife ha have their issues and he turns to alcohol, starts drinking, kind of like Florence Pugh, a good person, starts taking pills. And so he starts abusing alcohol really badly. We're talking shower beers, we're talking drinking and driving pouring beer into his cup so he could drink it at work, drink it everywhere he goes pretty much. And he has a beer, puts one in the freezer, has another just repetitive cycle, does some really destructive behaviors in the movie. Basketball, coaching this high school basketball team starts to turn things around for him. And like I said, I love basketball, love the cast in this movie. Uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, it's one of my favorites. It's definitely one of my favorite addiction movies. And I had a great, unbelievably great conversation with Nikki about the movie. And for me, I didn't drink for a very long time. And I've had this conversation with Mizzy when it comes to alcohol, because he'll ask me like, so you didn't drink very long. He's like, so do you still look at yourself like an alcoholic? And I'm like, yeah, I. it's interesting because... I wouldn't sit there and understand what it's like to drink for 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 years. I would have no clue what that's like. I drank for about a year, realized I had a problem. So if somebody wants to say you're not an alcoholic, that's fine. I had a problem and I recognized it and so I quit. Um, and I knew I had an addictive personality and I knew alcohol was a very destructive thing in my life just for that short time and so I chose to quit. But there are some things in this movie that I can relate to. Um, some of the destructive behaviors. I've had conversations with my dad. My dad has 40 or sober. Maybe a little bit more now, 41. And he told me that... So there's a scene in this movie where uh, Ben Affleck walks into a house and it's not, it's not where he should be. It's not the house that he thought he was walking into. And it's, uh, he gets kicked out of the house, basically, he gets arrested, things like that. And my dad, he told me the story. He's like, he's like, I, I, I was there. I did that. He's like, I walked into somebody's house once when I was drinking my drinking days. And my dad and I will like share stories and we still go to the, 
excuse me, my dad and I will go to the bar, we'll shoot pool with each other or something like that. Not often, but it, I'm not sitting here and saying that's okay. If, like I understand some people could never walk into a bar and that's smart, right? For my dad and I, it wasn't like that overnight, right? It took time. My dad's got 40 something years sober. I haven't had a drink in 11 years. Like my dad and I can do that. Not everybody can do that. And I'm grateful that I can do that with my dad, but we'll share stories. And my dad will oftentimes tell me because he kind of got a glimpse of some of the decisions I made when I was drinking. And he'll tell me, I remember I had a conversation with my dad one day and he was like, if you didn't quit drinking, you wouldn't be here today. He's like, you would have, you just, you would have, you would have been dead before 30 years old. Absolutely. I believe that. And having that conversation with my dad, it hits hard because like, you have those heart to heart moments and you realize like, yeah, like it's a good thing I did because I was just one year, I was making some really poor destructive behaviors. And so I know some people, you know, people watch my channel to, to troll and to be disrespectful and that's life, right? If you put yourself out there on YouTube, that's going to happen. Okay. Other people in the community have, Bluetooth community, whatever you want to call it, okay, have have had unfortunate, um, what, whatever, I don't know the word I'm looking for at the moment, but like, they've had to deal with that, unfortunately, some mean comments, sometimes people think they're being nice, but they're really mean, that's what the internet is, there's some really mean people out there, there's people that sit behind a keyboard, will never show their face, never leave their house and just talk so much trash to people. They'll use whatever they can to hurt you. And it sucks because I like, I like when I could sit here and be honest and be vulnerable because I feel like I'm hoping I can make a difference and I'm hoping maybe somebody out there could hear this or see this and say, hey, I need to open up. I, I have a problem. You know what I mean? The, the biggest thing for me is I want to make a difference and I want hopefully videos like this could get, it gives people an opportunity to get to know me and maybe they, they see it and they're like, oh, that's not my kind of person. That's okay. That's okay. But I hope that somebody might be able to see it out there and say, you know what? Maybe I can message that person I or whatever. Like, hey, I have a problem. Maybe somebody could recognize it or I, my video could hold somebody accountable or something like that. But um, I'm not perfect. Still not, right? I have a problem with movies. Um, but, and I, I do. I, I, I always have to be aware of my situation and my surroundings. Um, I don't keep alcohol in my house or my apartment, I should say. I have no reason to. I don't have many people over. My dad, when he comes over, which is usually the only person, he doesn't drink. So there's no reason to keep alcohol in my house, my apartment. Once again, I don't know why I keep saying that, but yeah, my place. Um, gambling, it's something that I choose not to even <laughs> check, right? I don't, I don't, tempt myself with that. I stay away from that. You know, I think when it comes to temptation, temptation is not the problem in itself, but like what you do with temptation is dangerous, right? So I try to avoid situations that are going to put me in situations to fail, right? So I'm not going to be around certain things that might cause that. Now, luckily, like I said, I can go to a bar with my dad. That's okay. It's never been a problem for him or I in the last however many years. But certain situations, especially around gambling, I choose not to do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much everything. These were the three movies I talked about. You had A Good Person, The Way Back, and Uncut Gems. Uh, all great movies. Uh, my favorite would be either, probably be A Good Person and The Way Back. Uncut Gems, I, I think it's a great movie. It's, it's very stressful. It's not quite my style, but I, I did give it four stars. I think it's a really good movie. I think it's really well made. Safety Brothers are more probably for other people than me. The stressful type of movies aren't quite my speed. Um, but Uncut Gems is a really good movie, and it's very relatable for me in, in certain aspects especially. So that's everything. Uh, like I said, I, I plan on putting out a video of one more of these um, in the next probably month or month and a half. I've been thinking a lot about the word community. I've, in the last year, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of people hate the word. Some people feel spited or feel a certain way. Some people might feel jealous or whatever. I have a lot to say. Um, I'm gonna spill my, my guts. I'm gonna be very honest. I'm gonna name people and I don't care. 
it is what it is. Um, I'll be as respectful as I always can be, but I just kind of had it. And so I'm going to be very honest that when I finally post that video and I put it out there. So expect that in about a month, month and a half or so. And uh, yeah, that's everything. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I appreciate everyone who watches. You know, I have those, like my circle, my bubble that of people that watch. I'm grateful for them. I appreciate it. The people that no matter what you post, they watch everything. They don't need to. They have much better things to do with their time than watch me for 35 minutes just talk in front of a screen. So I appreciate it. It's really cool that you spend 35 minutes with me while you could be watching a movie or a TV show. So thank you for taking the time to hang out with me. I appreciate it. Um, there's a lot of good people in this circle, this community, whatever you want to call it. Some really good people out there. You just got to surround yourself with them. And I choose to keep my bubble small. And I appreciate the people and the friends that I made because of this. And like the ones who do know my problems with or past problems with some of these things. And they hold me accountable or they check in. Um, I'll just name one person today. Tony from Basement Blues really quick. I haven't talked to him. I used to talk to him quite a bit on the phone, things like that. I give him a call or he'd call me. We haven't talked as much, okay? I haven't reached out. I've been going through just my own headspace lately for the last couple of weeks, just kind of really focusing on trying to make some changes in my life, get to where I want to be. And I've, I've got a lot going on in my head and I'm really trying to just make some better choices and changes and start to, I'm really kind of removing people out of my life that I don't feel like deserve to be there. And that's tough decisions, but sometimes that's for the best. And you got to know, like, know your worth, know who's worth keeping in your life. And uh, Tony, for example, has reached out. I haven't, but Tony a couple times in the last two weeks has reached out and just said, Hey, I hope you're doing well. Um, text me yesterday and text me again today. It's just, Hey, are you okay? Like, we need people like that. You need people like that in your life. And I always know that I have a Mizzy, a Jeff, a Johnny, a Tony, a Corey, and the list goes on, right? Nikki, she's a really good person. Like I talk to her about stuff in live streams. We need those people in our life who we can turn to, a fish, an Adam, that you can just be like, hey, I need to talk. Like, bro, I need, like, I'm, we just need to talk. I watched this reel and I sent it to Fish and a couple of my friends. It was this guy talking about how, like, he didn't understand his, his friend needed him. And they were like, can you come over? He didn't understand. And then he comes over a couple of weeks later or whatever. And I guess she was telling him, like, hey, I needed you. And you never replied. And he's like, what do you mean I never replied? You never asked me if I need, like, you never told me you needed my help or anything. And then she's like, I asked you to come over. And he's like, I thought that was just like you asking to come over like any other time. And she's like, no. And so he's like, how about this? Moving forward, when you need to talk to me, you just say, can I have eight minutes? And I thought that was really cool. And so I sent it to Fish. I remember talking to him about it. And he's like, you could have as many minutes as you want, Fish text me. And uh, but we need those people in our life where you could just text them and be like, I need eight minutes. And I've had conversations with friends. My, my dad called me. I remember a while back, my dad called me at 3.30 in the morning and we met at IHOP. He's like, hey, I, I just need to talk. Like we need, can I, can I, you know, talk to you? And got out, got my clothes on. I was in sleep. I had work in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, got up, threw my clothes on, met him at IHOP, had some chocolate chip pancakes, talked for an hour, hour and a half, went home, went to work. We need those people in our life who you call it three in the morning and they're just going to be like, yep, I, I already know. Like I'm throwing, you hear them putting on their jeans or like their shoes, getting their keys, right? They're on their way. Like you need those people in your life. And I'm lucky to have quite a few of them and they've come from this community. They've come from Instagram and YouTube. So when people want to shit on that and YouTube and Instagram and the blue tube, just because you might've had bad experiences and I've, I've had some bad experiences, right? And I've been, the problem sometimes I'm sure, right? Where I've made mistakes and I've burned bridges, but I'm grateful for the friends that I've made and the people that are in my life and that I can talk to on a daily basis and go to. And if I didn't name your name, that's okay. Some people get so bothered by that. Trust me, you know who you are. You know, you, I don't need to name your name to for you to know that you're important in my life, right? 
So I just get bothered when people, because I like to name drop people because I appreciate them. But like some people get offended, like, oh, you didn't name me. It's so hard to sometimes in that moment think of somebody, right? But I appreciate a lot of people. And there's other people that I might not have named where I might not be overly close with. But I know that I could still talk to, right? Or I can count on them to, like, say something supportive, right? I always talk about this on my damn live streams. But Allie, for example, every damn video I put out in every live stream, I can count on her saying something positive. And that, for YouTubers, not just me, but other people, is very important for somebody like Tim, for example, who recently talked about how he's taking a break because of such negativity and because of negative comments. So we need people like Allie who are going to, feed us that positivity every once in a while because some people deal with a lot of negativity. I've seen some of the Ken's comment sections and I'm just like, damn, bro, people are freaking mean. And it's nice to have a person like Ellie who you're like, hey, when I post this, I know I'm gonna have something nice that she's gonna say. And that feels good because negativity eats at people, man. Like it does. Even the brush it off, like Tim talked about, it. Har it's hard at times. It's hard. And so accountability, trust, friendship, bonds, family, brothers, family, brotherhood, all that stuff, like that's important. You need people in your life who are going to keep you grounded, who are going to hold you accountable, who are going to check in with you, who are going to ask you the tough questions, who are going to give you that tough love when you need it. We need those people. And I'm so grateful I have a lot of those people in my life who are very honest and real with me and you need that. You need that. So thanks, everyone. I appreciate you watching. I don't know when I'll post another video, but stay tuned. I got some other ideas, I think, in the works here. Um, that's everything. Appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for watching, and I'll see you on the next one uh, or next live stream because that's usually where I'm at. So have a good one. Thank you. See ya. Also, I forgot. Okay, uh, one more person, but he's literally going to be on my live stream on Tuesday. Joe, he's somebody I didn't mention in this video, right? And I don't want him thinking like, hey, out of everybody, he didn't he didn't mention me, right? Joe is another one in my life, let me tell you. I didn't I wasn't always close with Joe, but he's become an incredible friend. Like him and I will talk for eight hours. <laughs> I'm not joking. We'll talk for eight hours at the phone while we're both working. And uh, I'm so grateful. You need people like that in your life who are just like Man, if you get in a fight, I actually just texted Joe. I was like, dude, you would be that guy. I'd call if I got like in a fight. So you need people like that, man. Those are the people that are important in your life. Know who they are. Surround yourself with those people. And don't feel bad because your circle is small. Like I'd rather have a small circle of friends that I can rely on rather than 75 friends who are just like, eh, they're friends. I talk to them once a week on social media. I say, hi, how was the movie? That's it. Like, I want a tight circle in my life. And that's that's my thing. Other people have different things. There's nothing wrong with you wanting a thousand friends who you talk to throughout the course of the day. I need people in my life who are going to be that, that rock, so to speak. So appreciate everyone. Sorry for the ramble there. But anyways, have a good one. Appreciate it. I'll see you on Tuesday. This Tuesday coming up, it's uh, November 5th with Joe. We'll be talking about the 10 movies I recommended to him. So stay tuned and watch that, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one. Bye.